guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage. We are on another adventure. Summertime is usually when we are getting to dig out cars and having a lot of fun with uh, pulling neat old cars out of barns, garages, wherever. But our friends uh, Jared and Gary at Cabin Fever Auction Company uh, gave us a call because they are helping a customer that they're selling some stuff for move a neat old car out. And the building has a really neat history and the car is awesome. So we're gonna show you guys our little adventure today. So uh, let's follow us inside and we'll have John Paul tell us a little history about the building and the car. about the building that I mean the car is awesome we'll get that in a second but what's yep. the what's the history with the building and your dad's you know history with this building so this was as you saw it's um, a collection of buildings and I think the oldest stuff here is mid 1800s wow, okay. maybe I'm not exactly it's, it's hard to tell because they and there's buildings that are gone that were demolished that I can find the only references I can find an old map, like a okay. site map that has like dotted lines that yep. show like a building they removed. But it looks like as it was um, a metal working shop, okay. uh, Thomas Gassner Company, that I know also had other buildings in this neighborhood because I found them old things from the 1800s, references to their factories okay. within a few blocks. Yep. And they were, and from what I can tell, they would basically outgrow a building, knock it down or add an addition to it. And they just kind of kept going in a circle, upgrading to newer buildings. Yeah, and that's yeah. why there's like this. They at one point of... built into, yeah, like some old houses that were existing, they built into and converted yep. into offices and, and stuff like that. And and that was, what year was that approximately? That he 1974. Moved? Okay, so he <clears throat> moved in 1974 and he was running the business here until about when was it? Uh, uh, it's weird because he was, textile stuff, but then from the textile stuff in the 60s, he was one of the first people to make artificial arteries. Wow. And they were made on modified knitting machines. And you have some of them floating around in here, right? Yeah. 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 Cool. And that's, so the building textile stuff, that business just sort of tapered off as all the American textile mills disappeared because he yeah. lost his customers. Yeah, yeah. But then coincidentally, he had kind of unintentionally gotten into this new business never anticipating, you know, he, it wasn't like he, he saw his market leaving and he had to right. change. It was just, he just started working with his doctor and developed these arteries and that just sort of became his focus. And then he moved here in the seventies. So that's when you set up all the machine, he had all the machines set up in here for production. Yeah, he was, that? cause he was working, I think he, either two shifts a day or six days a week or something when they wow. moved here. So they were, I, I heard, cause the guys that worked for him, even my dad died in 96, but okay some of the people that worked for him stayed on until like the early 2000s and wow. uh and they'd been here i mean i know his foreman i think worked for him left to fight in the korean war came back and worked for him until 
you know. So he was a good employer that, I mean, for guys to stick around that long. Apparently. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, you figure a lot of, like his brothers worked here and his sister worked here. Like she worked more in the, the medical side. Right. But um, yeah, like a bunch of his siblings worked here, in-laws, and then just a bunch of people worked here for decades, you know. Wow. So they, so I, growing up, basically he moved here the year I was born. And my brother and sister and I grew up, this was like our second home. You yeah. know? So we knew everyone that worked for him was, they'd all been with him for decades. So we hear all the stories of like moving that yeah. year. Yeah, and, yeah, you know, yeah. they, some of them remember when he used to drive it. Wow. Which from the window sticker was in the 50s. I don't, Less as far as I know, it hasn't run in my lifetime. Wow. I mean, I've never, I've never heard it turn over. So, all right, so elephant in the room. Yes. Tell us about the car, um, you know, this, uh, Obviously, you mentioned it, it was the 70s that he, he, your dad took ownership of the, of the building, but the car is owned much longer. So what's the, what's the backstory on the car? I, I, I don't know exactly when he bought it, but I think it was the 40s. Okay. I know when he bought it, it was an older car. It yep. wasn't, you know, he did not go to a Packard dealership and buy a brand new Packard yeah, right. kind of thing. Especially, I mean, he would have been 14 years old. Yeah, so. But uh, I think he bought it in the 40s. And then it was his daily driver. Wow. Which I don't, I don't, well, I mean, in the sense that I don't think he really drove it around Philadelphia. I think, I thought someone told me that he took it to drive home to Connecticut to visit his mother. Okay. And stuff like that. Um, just because in that, that was like the heyday of streetcars in Philly. Yeah. And so he would just take the trolley everywhere. Yeah, so it didn't make sense. Yeah. yeah and, a car. But then at some point he got that car. And I never heard a story about how where he bought it from. Oh, okay. He wasn't really a car guy. It was more like he needed a car to get from A to B. And just happens to be a Packard. Yeah. And which he definitely liked. And it's probably still fortunately he had the sense to, it, it, you know, in the 50s, you figure in the 50s, it was not even a 30 year old car at that yep. point. I mean, it wasn't how we yeah. look at it today. Yeah, oh, definitely. But someone had the sense of like, let's, let's park this up when it, when it broke down the last time. Yeah, and, it, and so, when he moved it, you said he moved it from Connecticut to here, and you guys, when he- I, or he, No, he bought it here, because oh, he the, the plate inside says that it was delivered to Philadelphia in September 1927. It still has the engine in the, on the firewall. Oh, yes, yes, okay. Um, and, it, and it has it was delivered to the Packard dealer in Philadelphia. So wow. it did come through Philadelphia, and then he, he moved here in 39, and I think he bought it in the 40s. Wow, so the car is 1927? Is 1927. That Packard, obviously. Um, and it's pretty much as he parked it, right? I mean, I, it's yeah. like nothing's been really messed with. Now, I know you guys, people always in these videos when we do these are, are this is stage, this is whatever. So the, the car used to be a, only, what, a hundred yards from here or something in the building. It was just, it was, so it was moved. It came here not long after he bought the building in 74, okay. something like that. I don't exactly, I mean, it was the year I was born, so I, I, I don't remember this. My sister thinks up until then it lived in his mother's house in a garage. Okay. Because she didn't drive. She never learned how to drive. Okay. Uh, and she lived in Overbrook. Okay. And after she passed away and they sold her house, they brought the car here. Here. Which would have been, she was definitely alive. I remember her very vaguely, so she was alive later in the 70s. I don't okay. often remember what year she died. Right. But then from then it was, we got to do something with the car. And at that point in the 70s, it was, it was like, yeah, we, 50 year old car, you know. That's, that's. And then it was, it was that, when we have time, we're gonna all fix it up. My dad right. was like, you know, your brother and sister and I are all gonna work on it, kind of thing. Right, life and gets it, in the way, obviously. But it was, yeah, it was moved to a different spot, basically, other side of this building. Yeah, this is all the, yeah. now John Paul's talking about how him and his uh, siblings used to play in the back of that. There's like writing in here, music, basketball, school. There's like stuff where they were playing and writing some yarn, yarn, sewing related things. These Packards were uh, definitely, you know, the top of the line back in their time. And they have all kinds of really neat features that you would see on some of these higher end cars. It's got the courtesy blinds. Yeah. So that's there's really one cool. on the back window as well. Yep. And there's a little ashtrays here. You know, back in the day when oh, everybody the side smoked. windows roll down too. Yeah, got that. It's got the little pull down. Pretty incredible that these things still still work. Really neat. Yeah, for the age of this car, the interior is 
Incredible. Now these look like they might be. I think they're covers. Yeah, I think they're seat covers that were put on here. They look like later ones, but you need one of these right here. Footrest. Here's your footrest for the rear passengers. Really cool. There's little light switches here. Yeah. Dome light doesn't work, Matt. Oh, what the heck. Battery's dead. Can you believe it? All the neat details. I like, I like the door latches. Look at the, the door handle on the top of the window. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. On the top of the window. Oh, frame. yeah. That's how you open the door. Yep. And it's still got the wood wood grain dash on it, which is pretty cool. The wood graining still in really nice shape. The original steering wheel is nice. It has some cracks and stuff in it as expected for age. Um, John Paul said his, his dad did drive this thing. So it's got a heater. It's got an add on heater there, duplex, which is really, really great shape. And there's the original hand crank, which we tried to turn the engine and it's definitely stuck and we'll need some um, some work to get the engine freed up. Even the emergency brake, parking brake, it's killer. Actually, feels like it's all right. So, it has, looks like it has, it's either rolled over or it has 10,000 miles on it, I believe. So that would be pretty incredible, I'm not sure. The, judging by the shape of it, I wouldn't doubt that it's fairly low mileage. Slow and steady. <laughs> when was the last time this door was open? It's been a couple of years. Oh, uh, yeah. Wow, that door's pretty soft. <laughs> Can you do that again? <laughs> Oi. I don't want to know. <laughs> I don't want to jinx it. Wow. Well, see, yeah, this is the bottom of the door. Yeah. So, uh... Yeah, it's well, that'll be all right. When I bring it back down, I'll just put something heavy in front of it. Yeah. I live, I'm 35. I live across. The, I was born across the street. Oh I've yeah. Never seen you never seen it? No. Nope. Me, me too. We both. It's my cousin. Oh yeah. Yeah. You never saw it? No. Yeah. Been in here since. Uh, 73, I think. 73, 74. Yeah. 76. Damn. So it was put in here. I was before. born right there, so. Never moved. Yeah, that's crazy. Never see that gate. His dad bought it in 1940-something. That's your dad? No, my, our friend. Our his, friend his, his, his friend's dad, he, he bought the, uh, his dad's owned the building since the 70s, but he bought the car in the 40s. So family's gonna restore it, keep it in the family. Pretty cool, right? It's a big, big old car. Dang, a big <laughs> old car, yeah. That's a big. <laughs> yeah, it's a heavy car.
All right, so we're back from uh, towing and pulling the old Packard out of that factory in Philly. And uh, everything went fairly smoothly. There was a lot going on with the guys from Cabin Fever, uh, kind of moving all of the uh, stuff that they were pulling out of the building to auction uh, in, in an upcoming auction and us trying to get footage of what was going on there and also pulling the car out. Uh, we didn't get a good chance to wrap up at the actual location and uh, I figured we'd do something here. So uh, car came out pretty easy. Uh, it was a little bit of a hassle to kind of get the car moved over uh, and we had a little bit of hassle getting the uh, towing company to bring the right tow vehicle. Uh, even though Gary that uh, with Cabin Fever called him and, and set it up, he specifically asked for a rollback. We did not, like multiple times, they showed up in just a normal wrecker which wasn't going to work. They went back, got the uh, the rollback, and we were able to pull it out. Uh, we had to kind of give a little bit of uh, advice to the tow guy. He's definitely not used to dealing with pulling out uh, cars in situations like this. So he got to use his snatch block, which he said he didn't even know what it was for on the back of his truck. And Gary kind of coached him in getting that set up. We were able to drag the car to the side and then up on the rollback where it is getting moved to a new storage location. Uh, John Paul and his siblings are going to kind of decide what direction they want to go with getting the car back on the road. They've talked about just maybe getting it running and so that it kind of displays nicely and not doing a full-blown restoration or mechanical restoration on it. And uh, But I was kind of leaning towards, I think it would be very neat to embrace the uh, character the car has. It's really super solid and I bet the paint will clean up really nice. I think just a mechanical uh, going over or restoration would suit the car very nicely and they could have a car that they could enjoy to take to car shows, to family events and things like that. So hopefully we'll be able to check in with John Paul and his siblings later on uh, once they figure out what's going on and maybe we can uh, document getting the car running for the first time. That would be really awesome. We'd like to see this one hit the road again. So that's all we have for this one. I appreciate you guys following along. What do you guys think? Should this thing be fully restored or should it be left as is and uh, just driven uh, with the patina that it has? I'd love to hear what you guys have to say down below. Thanks guys, catch you later.